evening and welcome to the June 12, 2014 meeting of the Northampton School Committee. I'm Mayor David Narkowitz and we'll begin the meeting by asking the clerk to call the roll of the school committee. Present. 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 Here. Here. Present. Present. Thank you very much. And tonight we're going to begin our meeting with a very special recognition. Um, and the superintendent and I are going to go over to the podium um, for a recognition of our retiring uh, members of the Northampton Public School District faculty and staff. <laughs> It is with pleasure this evening that we recognize people who have been in our district for so many years and have contributed so much to our youngsters and the overall community of uh, the Northampton Public Schools. Um, we have this year uh, 14 retirees and um, I'm happy to say that we have some of us with us, with us this evening but um, some have not been able to join us. So I'm going to read the names and a little bit about each of them. Uh, and then um, let you know if they're here or not, and if they are, we'd like them to come up and we have something for them. The first one is Dennis Wasung. He's a school bus driver and he's retiring after 10 years with the district. The second one is Jean LeBlonde. She's Bridge Street School nurse and she's retiring after 12 years with the district. And I know that Jean is here. Evelyn Gore. Evelyn is an ESP and she's at Ryan Road Elementary and she's been with us for 18 years and she is here. <laughs> Next is Denise Johnson. She's a speech and language pathologist at Briggs Bridge Street School and she's retiring after 19 years with the district. Jacqueline Hebert, a resource room teacher at Leeds Elementary. She's been with us for 21 years and unfortunately she's not with us this evening. Susan Tolles, she's a secretary for the Student Services Office and she's retiring after 23 years with the district in various positions and she's un unfortunately not with us this evening either. Um, Deborah Dietrich, an ESP at Bridge Street. She's retiring after 23 years with the district and she is here. Joseph Zurwick, he's a custodian at JFK Middle School. He's retiring after 24 years with the district. And he's not here. Joyce Cott, a cafeteria assistant in Northampton High School, 24 years with the district. She's not with us. And Fred Itterly, a guidance counselor at Northampton High School, and he's retiring after 25 years. <laughs> Um, Carolyn Moriarty, a fifth grade teacher at Br Bridge Street, and she's leaving us after 28 years with the district. And uh, Patricia Connors, an ESP at Ryan Road Elementary, after 29 years with the district. <laughs> Kathleen Parent, a cook at the JFK Middle School Cafeteria, has been with us for 36 years. And Ken McDonald, a sixth grade teacher at JFK Middle School, is retiring after 37 years. And neither of those people are with us. But we certainly wish all of them many years of happy retirement.
Okay, thank you. Thank you again for all of our retirees uh, for your service, and we really appreciate the opportunity to recognize you all this evening. We'll now um, move to our public comment period, um, and I have a list of folks who have signed up to speak in public comment, and uh, we have a three-minute rule, and I'll have a timer for that. And the first person who is signed up to speak is Deborah Keish. I've pronounced that correctly. Yes. If you could just state your name and address just so that we can have it for the, um, for the record. Uh, my name is Deborah Keish. I live at 30 Ravel Ave in Northampton. Um, thank you to the school committee and the mayor um, <coughs> to, for hearing my comments tonight. Um, I'm a parent of two kids at Bridge Street and also the school council there. Did you want, oh, sorry, did you no, want it's to? It's my, my mistake. Keep going, sorry. <laughs> did I get the extra time? Okay. Um, Multitask. I've tried it two kids at Bridge Street. I'm on the school council there, and I'm also a member of the Northampton Public Schools Action Coalition. Um, I'm here because I'm aware that the school committee will be voting tonight on whether or not to implement the park test for the upcoming school year. It has come to our attention that several school com committee members, as well as many parents and even teachers in our community, are not as well informed as perhaps they could be about park and common core. And we're urging the school committee to vote against the implementation of park. Instead, we ask that we spend time as a community having a discussion about park, common core, and about high stakes testing in general. The Northampton Public Schools Action Coalition is hosting one such discussion next Wednesday at 7 p.m. in the Jackson Street School Library. That's the 18th. Um, we want to thank the committee members who responded to our invitation, even the ones who responded said they couldn't make it, um, and to say that we're thrilled that four of you um, will be there, Pam Hanna, Anne Hennessy, Howard Moore, and Ed Zukowski. Um, thank you for responding that you'll be there. We're excited to talk with you. Um, for those of you who didn't respond, we encourage you to attend. Even if your knowledge and opinions about these issues are not fully formed, um, we want to enter into a conversation together and learn from one another. Um, because Dr. Nash has suggested that we can provide information about the Common Core Standards and Park 2 committee members, so you'll have some additional information, um, we once again encourage you to visit our website, and um, I will send that website again via email to you all later. We have lots of resources about, about these issues. This is a critical time in education. These are intensely important issues that will impact the future of our students and teachers in our district, and we would really like to move forward together as a community in an informed and thoughtful way around these issues. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've had to switch to my smaller version because the uh, <coughs> larger one seems to have given me some problems. The next name on the list uh, is Aaron Mahan Moore. Hi, I'm Erin Mahan Moore, and I live at 163 Main Street in Leeds. Um, thank you for hearing my comments. Um, I am a parent of two children at Leeds Elementary School. I am also a member of the Northampton Public Schools Action Coalition, and I'm here this evening to urge you not to adopt the park tests for the 2014-2015 school year. There are many reasons to be opposed to our district's adoption of PARC, and I will mention just three right now. First, adoption of the test would mean a marked increase, a near doubling in the amount of time our children will spend taking tests as guinea pigs for these tests and for the companies producing them, as well as more time spent in test preparation rather than authentic learning. PARC involves nine days of testing, five for ELA and math in March, and in March and April, four in May. That's five extra days of testing and five fewer days of instruction. Third graders will be testing for nine days per year. Second, the park tests are intended to be taken online. Our district does not currently have the technology infrastructure necessary to support the test preparation, which, also, which will also need to be done online, as well as the tests themselves. The kind of money that we would need to invest in technology seems incredibly misguided when that money could be used for many other things, lost staff positions, enhanced music, arts, and language programs, or more. <clears throat> Third, as a parent from another part of the state recently noted, PARC is a sinking ship. The consortium started out in 2010 with 23 states and the District of Columbia. With Arizona's withdrawal last week, 12 states and D.C. remain. Do we really want to be the last survivors on that ship? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I'm 
Okay, the next speaker who signed up is Camille Kamak. <clears throat> My name is Camille Kamak. I live at 38 Terrace Lane in Northampton. I have two sons that attend Jackson Street Elementary, and I'd like to take a minute to speak about the park as well. As you make the initial decision about the use of the park testing, it's critical to take into account the influence of corporations and venture philanthropists on current education reform efforts and on education policy. I want to make a few comments about the role these groups have had in the development of park, the park test in particular, keeping in mind that this is just part of a large-scale corporate influence in education. There are considerable profits to be earned in public education. The American educational system is a five to six hundred billion dollar enterprise funded overwhelmingly by public dollars with billions of dollars in services and products being outsourced. One thing corporate reformers and venture philanthropists have done is press for implementation of a set of common standards. So we now have the common core and more and more high stakes standardized testing aligned to these standards. The Common Core standards and the testing aligned to these standards creates large nationwide markets for test developers, test administrators, and the curriculum materials developers who write and sell products aligned to the standards and tests. This is a multi-million dollar industry. State school commissioners and superintendents govern a body called the PARC, the Partnership for College and Career Readiness. Massachusetts Commissioner Chester is currently the chair of this group. PARC received $186 million of federal race to the top money to develop testing aligned to the Common Core. This money in turn was awarded to the Pearson Corporation through a competitive RFP process. Over the last year, Massachusetts and other states have been piloting these tests. Commissioner Chester said the park test would not replace MCAS unless it was shown to outperform the MCAS. However, it seems unlikely to me that the park testing would not be adopted regardless of the outcome of the pilot when so much, so much money has been invested in its development. Already school committees are being asked to make decisions about the use of the park before the pilot is even completed. When large investments of federal money and corporate profits are at stake, decisions are likely to be based on money and what is best for profits, not what is best for children. I urge the school committee to thoroughly familiarize yourselves with these issues, including the funding of the Common Core and Park testing, so that you might proceed with caution in implementing policy intended for the good of the nation's children rather than the good of the nation's corporations. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. So we had three names signed up for our public comment session. Um, and uh, those are the names that we have. Um, do not, are there other folks in, from, in wishing to speak in the public comment session? I am Stephen Kaplan. I'm a uh, resident of Northampton and I have a grandchild here at uh, JFK. Uh, I uh, represented a child before the uh, Bureau of Special Education Appeals, and uh, this youngster uh, had been expelled uh, from JFK uh, by reason of uh, misconduct. Uh, we uh, appealed unsuccessfully to the superintendent, and then we took the matter before BSEA, and uh, BSEA found against the uh, city on uh, a great many grounds finding that uh, Northampton had uh, mishandled uh, the procedure. Uh, based on that, uh, we became entitled uh, to uh, seek uh, counsel fees before the uh, U.S. District Court in Springfield. The uh, statute of limitations is about to run out on us, and uh, no doubt we're going to have to institute uh, proceedings, but uh, we will hope that the uh, school committee will consider uh, taking an active role in settling the matter. For that purpose, I have brought here tonight an insufficient number of copies of the decision by BSEA and also of the statute. Uh, I may say that uh, the BSEA decision, which was uh, carefully rendered after two days of hearing in uh, Worcester, is. Uh, a document with uh, which you should be become familiar. Uh, the performance of the uh, uh, Director of Student Services, uh, we contend, was not good. And uh, there are reasons why the uh, school... Mr. Kaplan, I, I, we spoke earlier, and I, again, I, I, um, I'm okay with you talking about it, but I, this is not the federal district court, and it's probably not appropriate for you to be making your opening statement here. So. 
um, if you could just close your remarks and you can certainly give a copy to our um, clerk and she will make additional copies for the school committee I'm grateful yeah. uh, I'm looking for my own copy which I don't wish to part with seriously request that the uh, members of the committee uh, read over these materials and uh, become familiar with the underlying historical events in order to uh, uh, give uh, increased uh, supervision uh, to the uh, performance of the executive uh, authorities here in the school system. Thank you, Mr. Kaplan. Thank Attorney you. Kaplan. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Okay, is there anyone else who wishes to speak in public comment? Okay, um, hearing none, uh, we have um, we have several uh, announcements. Recommend we have announcements. <coughs> so, if there's any school committee members which wish to make any announcements, they can do so at this time. I'd like to make an announcement. Um, I'd like to make a couple announcements. Um, First of all, I had a wonderful evening the other night at the Special Ed Education Rental Advisory Committee. They hosted an evening of awards. 61 educators and friends were honored on June 9th. It was a wonderful ceremony, and I would just like to congratulate all of those awarded. Um, I'd also like to thank Principal Madden and the Ryan Road School for their invitation to the Memorial Day celebration. This was Robert K. Finn's favorite holiday, and the entire school participates, and it was a wonderful time, and I'd like to thank you for the invitation, and we'll see you again next year, hopefully. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other announcements from school committee members? Okay. Uh, hearing none, we'll move on to the recommended actions <laughs> by the school committee, and we have uh, several items on your consent agenda this evening. We have the school committee meeting minutes of May 8, 2014. Uh, we have uh, a series of contract and transfer approvals. Um, we have the uh, volunteers in Northampton schools or VINs uh, support for the VINs coordinator position for 2014-2015 school year, and that's $10,779.26. We have a contract with Cascade School Supplies, Art and General School Supplies, uh, not to exceed $15,000, and a contract with W.B. Mason for Art and General School Supplies, not to exceed $60,000. We also have some field trip requests. We have the Leeds third grade going to Plymouth Plantation, uh, the Wampanoag home site, and Mayflower uh, two in Plymouth, Massachusetts, June 19th, 2014. We have the NHS girls soccer going to Pierce Camp, Birchmont in Wolfboro, New Hampshire, August 23rd to the 25th, 2014. And then we have an NHS uh, uh, field trip to Spain, April 16th through the 24th, 2015. So those are the <coughs> items on the consent agenda. Um, I would accept a motion to approve the consent agenda. Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So the consent agenda is adopted. Um, <coughs> no, I just, I know Mr. Lombardi was here to speak to the field trip. Uh, if there were there, there was no questions, so okay. just wanted to let you know. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Um, Okay, so we'll now move on to reports and recommendations. Um, the first is a vote uh, to appoint a um, school physician. Uh, and as you may recall, we honored our retiring school physician at our last meeting, and so I'll turn it over to uh, Dr. Nash to, uh -huh. uh, to bring that forward to you. Uh -huh. I feel that this is a historic uh, event, having the last school physician with us for 28 years. And if you're lucky, you might be able to repeat that record. Um, we're recommending um, for your new school physician to be uh, Dr. Diana Johansson from the Northampton Area Pediatrics. And um, she, she has been um, with the pediatrics firm for quite some time. And she's also been a physician, school physician in other school districts. Um, and most importantly, um, Dr. Selkirk is also excited about the prospect of her following in his footsteps. 
Um, the way we did this is Karen Jarvis Vance um, sent letters to the pediatric practices in the area to solicit um, people who might be interested in the position and Dr. Johansson replied um, and indeed I, be I believe that Karen met with her as well as some of the school nurses and we're very happy to recommend her to the board for hiring this evening. Okay. Um, so there's a recommendation from the superintendent. Um, can I make a motion to accept her? You certainly can. I'd like to make a motion to approve, um, uh, to accept Diana Johansson as the new school, school physician. Okay, so that's to appoint her in that position. To appoint her. And there's mm -hmm. a second from yeah, the second. vice chair. Any discussion or questions about this? I personally know of her, and she was my daughter's physician for years. She's a wonderful choice. I'm very happy. Mm -hmm. they, done a great job yeah. <coughs> okay so um, hearing no other discussion all those in favor of the appointment please say aye aye, aye. any opposed <coughs> any abstentions okay so congratulations and thank you to dr. Johansson who's yes. now our new NPS school physician uh, I see a very happy Karen Jarvis Vance <laughs> uh, okay so um, the next item before you is uh, we have some NEF um, grant awards. I don't see Sally Deans Lake here yet, uh, unless there's another representative from NEF that I'm not aware of. So we may want to move on in the agenda until um, someone from NEF arrives. Uh, so we will now move down to item D, uh, which concerns a vote regarding the NHS digital marquee. And I'd ask uh, Principal Brian Lombardi to step forward to make a presentation about that. Good evening. Hi. Uh, so um, I, I believe we have a lot of questions, some questions. Um, we're working with um, Ray Kohan from uh, Director of Maintenance, and we worked through the city officials, Joe Cook, making sure everything is in line. And what we're trying to do um, is have a digital marquee in front of the high school. Um, about eight years ago, one of um, um, our administrative assistants, Patty Semelovitz, who passed away, one of her <coughs> wishes was to have a digital marquee in front of our school. And at that point, um, fundraising went into effect, and we've received donations from each class since then, since I believe 2007, as well as PTO um, support. Um, we've raised around roughly $21,000. Um, and we've already put the legwork in, working with um, powers that be for <laughs> approval, making sure we're working within the um, zoning and the by bylaws of the city. Um, and we're in the, the beginning stages of working with the company and getting the site and everything all set. Okay. Ms. Minnick. Is this a freestanding <laughs> sign outside, or is it something mounted on the building? No, it's going to be free sign se separate. It's if you're looking at if you're looking at the high school and Elm Street, that, that corner, we'd be looking to have it on the corner. Um, the old marquee really is by the church, looking out onto Elm Street. Um, it's kind of hidden from the tree, as well as most of our traffic comes down <coughs> by the bu bus loop. So we figure if we'd have it down there, it'd be more access for family, students, um, people of the Northampton High School community, they'd be able to see that. It would be a two-sided sign, and we'd position it so you could see it and read um, coming down the hill and going up the hill as well. And there's also um, restrictions by the city in regards to how long it's a scrolling sign and they have restrictions of how long, we're working again with all the restrictions um, and policies they have in place about how long the message can be, how long it can um, stay placed before it has to rotate through. You don't want it to be a distraction for drivers, so there's a, a time limit they have, and again, we're working with the powers that be to um, put that in place. Mr. Duvall. So they have a, um, a, a fund <coughs> specifically, um, a fundraising specifically for this marquee, and now it's, it's been met? I mean, the finances? Yeah, every class has um, diligently since 2007 offered, um, typically a, a gift comes down from the graduating class back to the high school, and each class every year has given um, funds back to this fund for that, yes. That will cover the sign, um, the electrical work, um, and all work that will go into putting it in, erecting it, um, and the um, landscaping around it. <coughs> and as for upcoming maintenance that's going to eventually be done, do you um, foresee other classes still giving money towards the sign to maintain the sign, or? Um, no, I don't think we've gone that far. I don't think the sign will need that much maintenance after. Once the sign goes up, you know, it's, it's a sign, they're gonna landscape it, and at that point, it'll just be <coughs> 
I believe our maintenance, um, our grounds crews that will maintain um, the site around that. Right, I was just wondering if it broke or, you know, I mean, had issues. Darren, <coughs> it's like any warranties come with this. Okay. Tell you, you're going to a company to give you a warranty and after a certain time, it's, it's ours. And then we have, like anything else, we would be um, responsible. The people that would be responsible to um, take care of it. Thank you. Mrs. Minnick. Because I'm the oldest person around here, the veteran, <laughs> I will tell you that <clears throat> when I moved to this town in 1986, I think Patty Samalevitz may have been among the very first people I met. She was the secretary at Ryan Road School at the time. She moved to the central office and she was, for a period of time, the clerk to the school committee. She was also uh, in charge of transportation for a period of time. I think she also did registration and school choice for some time before she moved to the high school. So she was, and she was also the co-leader for the Brownie Troop <laughs> My, when I, that, and I was the other lead. We, she and I were co-leaders for a year in the Brownie Troop when I first moved to this area. So she um, certainly was someone who gave up herself to the community and particularly to the educational community. I wasn't even aware that she left this request, but I think this is a wonderful legacy for her and a wonderful way to honor her. And so I'm thrilled that the money has finally been raised to do that. Thank you. So is the, is, I just, because I um, just want to be clear, so the vote is to allow for the um, ex acceptance and expenditure of the gift funds exactly. for this purchase of this sign. Exactly. Okay, and the installation. So that's that, the motion that we would need. I'll make a motion to... Um, I, just have a, I just want one more question mm -hmm. to follow up. We talked about the maintenance. Is there any software maintenance involved in this? How is the sign? How are you getting the words on the sign? Is that through some kind of software that we'd have? The to company that brings in will bring in the software that will connect to um, a computer in the building. We'll be able to enter the signs, the messages um, via that. So is there a long-term contract that we have with this company to maintain the software? Do we own it when we get it, or how, which, yeah. with, with the latter? We we're we're going to own it after that. They, they, get, they give us a, a warranty for so many years, but then it's ours, yes. Okay. Thanks. Okay, I'd like to move um, to allow or the NHS digital marquee to be put up in the high school. What was that? <laughs> Is that where we're going to well, we, we need to sort of vote to accept, accept the gifted funds oh, we're and, accepting then, and allow gift. them to be expended for this purpose. So Okay, so we have to move to accept the gift as a friend. Okay. And, and, then to, and then we're authorizing it to be expended for the purpose. So moved. Okay. Yeah. Sort of a two-step. I'd second the motion with, the, with gratitude to Patty's estate. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lisa. <coughs> Mr. And to Moore. the classes that have contributed yep. to, to. I have a question. I don't know if this is, a, this is a, 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 maybe a separate issue or maybe it doesn't exist at all. Do we, is this, is, is this is going to be in service of memorial, sort of? I Will it have like I Patty Samalowitz's name on it? Or? I think we would like to put a plaque on that. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure the word. Yeah, we'd like to put a plaque to acknowledge, yes, I think. Okay. okay. And I don't really know, you know, some, sometimes when we name things, it has to be voted on by the school committee. Mm -hmm. And I just don't know whether that means we're naming the sign, like, you know, or, or if this is, or, or if that's separate from something we have to vote on. I mean, I understand right now what we're voting, the issue we're voting on is to accept the gift. I'm yep. certainly clear about sure. that. Sure. I, think if it was a, I think it was like a building or something. Okay. okay. I'm not sure. We could look into that, but. I know we I have it like down on naming it. Uh, David Wright right. Field. A computer yes, that exactly. can say right. donated by. Yeah. I think your policy says if you're naming a field, a building, a library, something of that nature, and you do need to do that. Okay. But I don't think we're naming a sign, we're just acknowledging. Yes, well, yeah, okay. it wouldn't be the Patty Simulevitz sign. Okay. <laughs> um, there will probably be a plaque at some point that so. says, anyway. uh, um, acknowledging that Simulevitz in some way. Yeah, I would hope that would be. Yeah. Okay. It's the Lombardi marquee, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm not sure if that would fly, but you know, <laughs> the NHS marquee is fine. Perfect. <clears throat> okay. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so there's been a motion made and seconded. Um, any other discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, the, um, the motion carries and
Thank you very Look much. Forward to seeing the, seeing the marquee. When do you expect that the is it going to happen over the summer for the start of the school year? Um, we're still working on some of the finer details <coughs> in regards to placement um, and making sure again we're sticking with um, town requirements, zoning, yeah. zoning, and all that. So we would hold to the road. over the summer. At summer fall, I think it's much more logical um, time for that. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next item uh, on the agenda is a vote um, concerning our, our selection of a, te a testing uh, for the coming uh, 2015 um, and uh, whether, in fact, to um, stay with MCAS or to move to park testing. And I'll turn this over to the superintendent for a recommendation to the school committee. All right. Um, as you've received in your packet, um, there is a requirement by the state with regard to selection of either the MCAST or the park testing for the 2014-15 school year. Um, this is not to say what will happen after that. When we looked at this information and realizing that we have indeed done a pilot test in two of our schools, so we understand what park is, um, the administrative team, your current superintendent and your incoming superintendent, uh, because we attended meetings together, um, have all looked at the fact that we should really be doing MCAS for one more year. We're not making any judgments on the further year, but I would be um, remiss to tell you that the expectation that most superintendents have, including myself, is that the year after that we will have PARC as the test for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So, but that's not what you're voting on. What you're voting on is what we do next year. When this question was originally posed by the Department of Education, uh, it was understood that superintendents were making this decision. So not wasting time, because I never do that, um, I checked in with the administrative team, I checked in with the incoming superintendent, and I selected um, uh, MASC, I'm sorry, um, MCAS for next year. Then there was a memo that came out that the attorneys for uh, your organization, <coughs> school committee organization, and the superintendents association got together and they determined that the decision was that of the school committees. So. The good news is that the decision that I made can be undone up until June 30th of this year uh, if you decide you want to go with PARC. So you're not bound to my decision. However, <laughs> what I'd like to do is talk to you about why the rationale that we used in terms of <coughs> determining the next year would be a good year to stick with um, MCAS. First of all, um, as someone said earlier this evening, the park test is set up to be a computerized test. It's not really set up for a paper and pencil. Northampton schools do not have enough technological devices at this point to do a test of this length in all of our schools at the same time with the, within the window that they give us. So that's one of the issues is the lack of devices. Secondly, we have two of our schools who are currently at level three, and each of which have been working very hard to improve their scores on the MCAS. Uh, it is our feeling that the schools would be best served by using the same data collection and analysis to determine the degree to which we have improved versus trying to switch horses in midstream and look at another test in order to do this. We also feel it's easier to overcome the level three status using MCAS because PARC most likely will be more, a more difficult test. And even though they're still calibrating the proficiency levels for each subject area, we're not quite sure how that's going to work. And that we really would like to see um, a continuity of what we're doing because we're very hopeful we're going to be able to get out of level three. Um, the results will not need much effort to be compared to the previous year's results. Park will convert, convert their scores to make comparisons possible, but it is rather complicated and it would take more um, time for training of our teachers and our administrators. And we feel that we have more important professional development um, priorities at this point. 
Um, we already know what to expect, so if indeed they go with park statewide a year from now, we're not in the dark. We've done two pilot testings. Uh, we're aware of the needs, et cetera. Um, so our feeling is that we're not going to gain anything by being with park for next year. Uh, we already have that knowledge. And um, there is considerable amount of time that's necessary to do the training at the teacher level and administrative level in administering this. This year we only involved a couple of classes at one of our elementary schools. Our director of um, curriculum and assessment and our director of technology pretty much. Um, and then we did that again in our middle school. But to train all the teachers for administering grades three through eight is going to take some time to do that. Um, the test um, is untimed for all, meaning uh, the MCAS test. The PARC test is a time test. It's also a big difference. It's also double the amount of time um, that we're using now for MCAS because you're tested twice a year, sort of mid-year and at the end of the year. And probably most importantly, the uh, Massachusetts Board of Education has not yet voted to accept PARC. And the commissioner did say at a meeting I was at that it's possible that it could end up being a revision of MCAS. Um, if I were a gambling person, I don't think that's likely, but it's possible. So I guess why would you go to PARC and then find out that you're really not going to use it statewide in another year? So that's the rationale we used, and that's why we would like to recommend that for the next year only that you stick with MCAS. Are there any questions for the superintendent? Yeah. Question, if not, Ms. Hannon, question. It's not so much a question, <coughs> just more kind of a statement and just sort of my thoughts on this. Um, so for myself at this time, I can't choose between MCAS and PARC um, because based on my current knowledge, which I admit is limited, um, I don't think either of these tests are an option that really serve the young people um, in our community. And I think that um, this group needs to have further discussion about high stakes testing to determine if it is something that we want to impose upon um, the young people that we're serving. Um, and I, you know, we're charged with the big picture thinking um, that sort of sets the, helps sets the policy and procedures for the superintendent and the administrative team um, to move forward. So I feel that it's really important for us to, as a group, to increase our knowledge um, and, and determine where we're at in terms of high stakes testing. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there. Okay. Ms. Hennessy? Yeah. <clears throat> Since the, I hear what you're saying about um, the Mass Board of Education not voted to accept that yet and that we get to vote. And I, I agree with Pam in, in some ways. I think that it would be a great opportunity for us to either write a letter um, expressing our concerns about high stake testing or minimally park um, for so many reasons and how it was pushed in the way that it was, um, that it's untimed, that it is trying to address an issue that I feel like it's exacerbating some of the problems. Um, that I'm not, I don't think we have the, we can't do this now, but I do think that Northampton is a community that would be meaningful if we had a, if we had a, a letter or a comment, a public comment, saying that we had some concerns about what's happening in education now. And we all have anecdotes, and, and I'm not against standardized testing, I'm against the high stakes nature of them, that I think so much research, I mean so much research shows that it is not helping, um, and that teachers at a local level know how students are doing, and they know how to make assessments, um, and it might not do anything. I actually understand what you're saying, except that I think if we keep thinking that nothing is going to happen and we don't say anything, then nothing will happen. And so I'd love to engage in that discussion. Um, and I personally would love to have, I don't know, a letter or a statement. So that's my comment. Okay. Ms. Miller. Um, I actually was, uh, attended the collaborative for Educational Services Board meeting last night, and I asked them to put on the agenda new business, and under new business, I raised this issue of park testing because I know it's a concern for our community. Um, Amherst Regional had a meeting specifically about it earlier this week at which they discussed it, and they have 
I think community members there have similar concerns to the ones that were expressed by community members here this evening. I, feel, I also know that people from other districts and there, you know, the collaborative, there were a number of districts there. Not all of us were participating. This was a, actually, we were, had run out of time by the time we got to new business. So we adjourned our meeting, but several people stayed after to just talk about it briefly. And, and things ranged from, the, you know, we were being asked to vote whether to do in Castle Park, she said, and we didn't even, it just showed up on our agenda and we had no background to Amherst, which has now had a forum on it and talked about it. So there's a variety of levels of understanding of what, what the test is about. And there's also, needless to say, a variety of opinions about the whole thing. I, um, I agree with much of what you said and with what you've said. I also think that the collaborative is well positioned to make a statement that e carries even more weight because there are a great number more districts. However, the collaborative is not ready at this moment in time to take an advocacy position because we haven't had the discussion yet. But it will be interesting to see over the next four to six months maybe if we can have that discussion with the collaborative and in our individual communities and come up with what we think about this, whether, you know, and I, I applaud the decision, of, uh, or actually applaud, I, I guess I appreciate very much the background that the superintendent has given us about their decision on the administrative leadership team, and their decision was clearly made on some very practical Absolutely. reasons, <coughs> arguments for not participating in the coming year. I think this body obviously needs to have the discussion about high stakes testing and how we feel. I don't think that I don't think that this body in and of itself is prepared to take a position that would put us at risk for losing state funding or accreditation of our high school or something like that. However, if we felt like there were enough other districts to get with us that we could, we could make some noise, if you will, or just at least bring attention to a concern, I think that would be the right way for us to go. So. Yes, a letter from us would be great if we can come to a decision, but even participation in an, and coming up with a position from the collaborative, maybe we do both. Okay. But I'm just suggesting that. So. Okay. Mr. Ball? Um, well, I understand and I do happen to agree a little bit with what everyone's saying because we don't know an awful lot about it. However, we've been having MCAS for years now and we're being asked to change over to PARC, probably. I would like to make a motion to continue with the MCAS as, as we have been asked to do by the superintendent, by the administrative um, leadership team, because of the reasons that <coughs> have been given, that um, one of them is the comparison level, being able to compare for our level three schools, um, to be able to compare the results. And we don't know where Park is going. We haven't had the, the in-depth discussions. Maybe we need to have the in-depth discussions about high stakes testing in the, you know, just in general. However, in the meanwhile, we do have to make a decision one way or the other. So that's why I would like to move to accept MCAS for this year, because to me, logically, it doesn't make sense to, to try to implement, some, implement something that we really don't know about and haven't decided about. It's better like the devil we know than the devil we don't. And so I'm making a motion. Okay. So there's been a motion made. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. Um, and it sounds like coming out of this discussion, there's some interest in, um, in having a more extended discussion about this. And that may be something we can discuss with Dr. with, uh, with um, uh, Superintendent Provost when he arrives. I think that might be a great um, thing for us to work on in some of our early discussions with him. We, al we also have that um, June 18th that um, somebody has organized for us all to get together on June 18th to get together and talk about okay. parks and they're, I think they're going to be doing more presenting than that yeah. and I'm hoping that everybody goes so that we have that information and knowledge. You know, and I'm hoping that we're also not being pressured that night into having an opinion and making an opinion right then. I hope it's that they're very respectful to us as far as giving us the information that they feel that we are either lacking or need to know. Okay. Yeah. And, oh. Sorry. And, and I, for one, want to hear opinions on across the board. You know, people who um, you know really support each one of the tests and people who don't support it, so that I can make a, a well-informed, you know. 
I can develop my opinion and, and be well informed. Ms. Hennessy. Yeah, I was going to say about the, um, the June 18th. And I think my understanding from them is that they want to hear our opinions, but in no way are they forcing us into anything. It's really to start a community discussion that needs to happen. Um, and, you know, I'm going to quote Abraham Lincoln poorly, but you know, public sent if you have public sentiment, you will have success. If you don't, you will fail. And I think that this is a community building opportunity for us. And I, yeah, I want to hear everyone's opinion. Um, but I think that June 18th would be a great start. Okay. I just want to, um, I think the practical reasons that the superintendent listed for not going with park make a lot of sense. I just want to uh, highlight one because it's near and dear to me. It's the, the requirement that all these tests have to happen online is a very onerous one. Not because our school district doesn't have the technological infrastructure to do it, just because it's very difficult to do that for 2,300 students all at once, and that's um, that's that's hard. So I just wanted to point out that it's not just a deficiency; it's not a deficiency in our district. Yeah. It's just a, a too much of a demand on the test. Okay, so um, there's been a motion made and seconded uh, to. Um, to accept the superintendent and all teams recommendation to stay with MCAS for the 2014-2015 school year. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Abstention. There's one abstention. Okay, so the motion carries. Okay, so um, I, I see that our friends from NEF are here. So uh, we'll um, go back uh, to um, up to item uh, B. Uh, which is um, the NEF small grant awards vote to accept those and I would recognize is it going to be Sally or perfect okay so we'll recognize um, Sally Deans Lake from NEF um, who will present the NEF small grant awards um, and NEF is seeking a vote uh, from us this evening to accept those, uh, those gifts Thank you, and I apologize <coughs> for being late. Um, we didn't quite peg this <laughs> at the right time. So um, on behalf of the Northampton Educational Foundation, we are um, approaching the school committee for your acceptance of these 10 small grants. Um, I will just read the um, title of the grant because I assume you all got the documents. Thank you. So the first grant is from the Bridge Street School for $2,000 Outdoor Learning Playground Enhancement Project. The second grant is also for the Bridge Street School See, Hear, Feel, Film Visual Literacy Program for third grade students for $1,700 and $27, and it's the second year of the grant. The third grant is the Professional Learning Community for Math Inquiry in Year 3 at the Jackson Street School for $1,000. The fourth grant is Family Math Night at RKF, Ryan Road, for Year 2 for $1,813. <clears throat> grant five is stop motion animation workshop also at Ryan Road for $1,450. The sixth grant is introduction to color glass fusing with visiting artists at JFK. The seventh grant is after school buddies for elementary school students. It's a combination program at JFK. <coughs> Jackson Street School and Leeds School for $2,000. The eighth grant is Poetry Workshop Mentors at the High School, Northampton High School, for $1,625. The ninth grant is Scholastic Arts and Writing Contest, also at the Northampton High School for $1,251. And finally, the tenth grant, Upgrade and Advancement of the Northampton High School online newspaper for $1,550. Um, 
Any questions? Mr. Ball? Um, some of them say year two and year three. Are, are all of these, I mean, is it year two of a two-year grant or a three-year grant? How do we know how many years the grant is actually for? So it's the policy of the NEF small grants program to fund grants for one year with a three-year limit. And the third year, um, the amount has to be half of the second year. That's to, um, to underscore the idea of we're hoping this to be seed money and that um, we want the seed to get planted and take root, but don't see the small grants project as being able or its mission to provide grants. Okay, and then for the introduction to the color glass fusing, um, it says the project will introduce all seventh grade students. Okay, and now it, that's year three. So with each one of those years, is it uh, the seventh grade each yes. year? Oh, okay. Yes. yes. Thank you. Any other questions? I would accept a motion to uh, Ms. Minnick. I move grateful acceptance of the small grants from NEF for the coming fall. Second. Any discussion? Um, okay, so again, emphasizing the motion is to gratefully accept um, and thank you to the, to the board of NEF and to the Small Grants Committee and to all of the donors in the community the who support NEF, uh, everyone who puts on funny costumes and goes to the spelling bee, mm -hmm. uh, everyone who buys plants, uh, you know, et cetera. So thank you. So I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, uh, you'll need to leave the room. But <laughs> uh, anyone opposed? Okay. So Thank it's you unanimous. For coming too. Thank you. Oh, yes. So um, to present the endowment grants um, is our relatively new president, Amy K. Lane. And I'll turn this over to her. Great. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks so much for letting us. Um, I am delighted to present to you for acceptance three awards from the Endowment Committee, totaling $56,320. The first one is a grant to JFK for what's called the JFK Technology Institute for a total of $15,775. The second one is a multi-school grant, uh, Child's Park Sharing Place, a multi-school tile installation, <coughs> which is NHS, Bridge Street, and Jackson Street for a total of 9250 And the third grant is the Outdoor Garden Classroom, A Sense of Place, which is a grant for all of the elementary schools combined. It's a three-year grant. They're being awarded 31295 in the first year and a total over three years of 75000 Wow. Those are the three. Move to accept the gifts with gratitude. OK. Is there a second? A second. Excellent. Any discussion or, or questions about this? Um, I just have a quick question. How is it decided? I mean, you have, you have this amount of money, <laughs> and that you're putting. How is it decided those that it was going to those three like, places? Um, so we receive. We, there's a committee, the endowment distribution committee, that accepts applications and reviews all of the applications. We get together as a group and discuss them, and we narrow them down to finalists. And we ask those finalists to come in and do presentations. We give them questions that we'd like them to answer based on their applications. They come in, they oftentimes bring supporting staff, teachers, community members, um, slideshow presentations, whatever they want to bring um, to answer the questions that we had after their application. And then based off of um, a review of what they bring to that callback round, if you will, comparing with our guidelines, we discuss amongst ourselves. About how many applicants did you get for those, and it came down to three, so about how many was I believe this year we had five applications. They oh. usually fluctuate between, I'd say, four and eight. Thank it you might be helpful much. if you explained the, the difference in the origin of the funds and how it, and what the intent was in creating two separate funding sure. streams. So for the small <coughs> grants, they, um, they're funded by our annual fund, which is the annual fundraising we do every year. And the intent for those is, um, as Sally said, to provide seed money to run smaller projects, to give teachers a little breathing room to do something new and exciting in their class. The endowment 
grants are funded by the endowment, which was a separate fund created with the idea that we would be providing um, grants that ideally attract or, or impact students at multiple places. So either multiple schools, multiple grades, across all classrooms of one grade in a particular school, and that would have some sort of lasting impact. So ideally it's not just a one and done project, but it's something that might um, leave some sort of lasting legacy. If it's not the project repeating itself, then it's um, maybe a project that creates um, things in the classroom that can be used year after year, something like that. And that's funded off of our endowment as opposed to our annual fundraising efforts. Do you, do you happen to know offhand what the amount balance is in the endowment? <clears throat> it's over a million dollars, but I don't. Do you know, Sally? I don't, I don't, I, I, that's, that's okay. that was good. It's 1.2 <laughs> and 1.3, 1 1 1 but I don't have an exact figure, I'm sorry. But it was, it was a huge fundraising campaign where there were donors that gave large amounts over a period of years to, yes, to fund that yes. endowment. And with the idea that, yeah, it would fund exciting, innovative things that weren't um, able to be covered by the school budget. So are these particular endowments this year, is that utilizing simply um, interest that's yes. been built on the endowment, so you're not spending yes. the nest egg. You're we don't touch spending. the endowment. We we spend just a percentage of the income that we earn every year. Thank you. Sure. And it's invested at the Community Foundation. It is Western, Western Mass Community yeah. Foundation. Yes. Please. Quick, quick comment. I, as the committee member on the board, I could, I can't even. This is such a committed and engaged group of people who do such great work. And it was a weird time this year, but the showcase, it was on June 4th, showed all these grants. And um, it's just an amazing group. I can't highlight how wonderful, the wonderful work you guys do. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amy. So sure. we've had a motion that's been made and seconded uh, to accept <laughs> the endowment. Um, Grants, I know the suspense is probably killing people at <laughs> home. So let's call the question. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you very much. Thank you all so much. Okay. Why would we say no when you're trying? Yeah, why are you? I thank you for coming. <laughs> okay. Um, so sure. we'll now move back to the regular part of the agenda. Um, so we have, we're back to item F. And uh, we have the business manager's report. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I believe Dr. Nash will be playing the role of the business manager. This I will. Evening. I will. Unfortunately, uh, the interim business manager, Don Scott, um, became very ill this morning and went home. Um, but he didn't do that until he gave me all the information <laughs> I needed from this evening. Um, so, what you have are basically two items uh, that were given to you this evening. One is with regard to the expenditures through to date through June 12th, um, and I would just have you look at the end of that, and you're probably going to think that you have lots of money left over. So I want mm -hmm. to tell you what still needs to come out of this between now and June 30th. Um, first of all, the rest of the salaries for the month of June for all employees of the school district. There are also balloon payments to teachers who decide they want all their money within the period of their teaching time. Um, the summer salaries for those teachers who want them to go through the summer are 26 pays. Uh, and all the clerical custodian and other administrators, et cetera. So uh, that's probably someplace close to $3 million when we put it all together. Uh, in addition to that, there's obviously the utilities. Um, there's uh, the maintenance projects. And this time of year is when we really um, do as much as we can maintenance um, because we know we have some money that we can expend in that area. So we're not going to have a lot of money left over at the end of the year, but uh, obviously more in black, and that's the important part of it. Um, new hires, as you can see, we picked up a cafeteria recess assistant at Jackson. We've got 11 new uh, substitutes in May. We have some student theater techs. We picked up seven of those in May. And we have temporary summer painters, one new and one returning in May. Uh, we've also had two people, uh, I'm sorry, one person leave us um, and one retirement in, in the month of May. I'd be happy to try to respond to questions if you have some. 
I can't, I'm sure that uh, Mr. Scott would be happy to answer them if you wish to call him. So, uh, Mr. Ball? Yeah, I just have a question on the textbooks, which is at 213.3 percent. Sorry, a question on what? Textbooks. Textbooks, textbooks. line 2410. Yes. And, uh, I know that we just changed into the math and the investigative. Mm -hmm. Is that reflective of why it's okay. at that point? That's correct. So we purchased textbooks and mathematics for both the uh, uh, middle school, the high school, and we also purchased the <coughs> handwriting without tears and one other um, um, uh, investigations at the elementary level. So all of those came out of that line. Okay. So what will happen is at the end of the, at the, as we close out the fiscal year, the business manager will most likely either request sort of a vote that will move money around within the budget to true up that particular line item, mm -hmm. uh, but he'll, that'll be taken from another line item. You have budget. enough money in your budget. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So that's not an uncommon occurrence. So. And we pretty much can expect next year's to be pretty much minimal then. I mean, is, is that true? If we're buying I so many textbooks what, I don't this know year, what you have in your line item for textbooks. For next ah, year. Yeah. it's already in your budget. Whatever it was that okay. Yeah, but this was sort of a this was a somewhat larger kind of capital investment almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we're kind of very what small. my understanding is, you do in this district it's is for budget. handwriting without yeah. tears and for investigations. You buy them at the end of one year for the next fiscal year. Mm -hmm. So I assume you'll be doing that next year for the following year. So hopefully you have that money in there. Okay, so um, any other? Well, just one quick comment, and that would be on behalf of the school committee, uh, Superintendent Nash, I'd like you just to report back to Mr. Scott and express our gratitude for his ability to come in during a very tough time of the year because it was our budget season to really look at the numbers and make things comprehensible to us so that when we had our discussions around the budget, we were able to. Uh, make the decisions that we had to make mm -hmm. and have the answers that we needed in order to make those informed decisions. So on behalf of the school committee, I, I wish you would report back to him and, and share with him how grateful we were for his work. I will do wish that. Wish him well in his retirement. Second his re-retirement. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sure. Happy to do yes. that. Thank you. Okay. So um, we now have, um, it's not really 12 uh, we now have a, an executive session on the agenda. Oh, excuse me, my, my mistake. I'm sorry. Superintendent's report. I'm so sorry. I'm dying to hear. Getting ahead. Of I bet you are. <laughs> Um, okay. Um, I actually have more items this evening than I usually have. Um, I tend to be a person of few words. Um, I wanted to give you an update on the food service. Uh, that came to the board uh, last month under public comment, so I sent you some information and I'm happy to report out. I asked um, our food service director to give me an updated list of um, outstanding debts at this point. So as of June 9th, um, we have debts totaling $3,093.43, and that comes from um, 322 different families across all of our schools. Um, of that number, and I think the concern that was expressed at the last meeting sort of slanted in terms of maybe the situation is that we have people who are in free and reduced hot lunch who incurred these debts and are unable to pay them. So I specifically asked a breakout as to who's free, who's reduced, and who's other. Um, of that number of the 322 families, we only have 47 families that are either on free or reduced. Um, which means that they incurred the debt prior to the time they were found eligible. However, the two, 275 other families are people who theoretically can pay for their children's meals. Um, and that basically means that 85% of the outstanding debt belongs to those families. Um, you may not think $3,000 is a lot, but I think we do. Um, in terms of the amount of money that we're trying to put into food now because we have a lot of mandates of the types of foods we have to buy and provide and they are more expensive um, because hopefully they're healthier. So it really does make a difference not to have um, over $3,000 worth of, uh, worth of uh, money coming into us. So <coughs> what I did was um, 
I too am concerned, and I talked with the administrative team about this. So we came up with some changes to our policy. Um, I'm sorry, to our procedures, not our policy. Uh, first of all, all the students in our elementary and middle schools will continue to receive hot lunch even if their accounts are in arrears. For those families who have incurred debt prior to being determined to qualify for free or reduced, a meeting of the food service director, the principal in that building, and the business manager will be held to determine if the debt needs to be waived or if arrangements for payments need to be secured. Because we're also very eager to make those arrangements if we have people who cannot pay the full amount in one check, then we're happy to do it over a weekly basis. We just need to make that um, a possibility for them. So we'll look at that. Um, for those families who have incurred debt but who have not who have not been determined for free or reduced status, the food service uh, director will notify them after an amount of $2.75 is reached. Um, that's been $2, but our meals are $2.75, so I think it's only fair we notify people after they've missed one lunch. She's doing that now, and that's done um, in terms of a computerized program that you have for food services. You can check your balance that way, so that it, that is being done. Um, the second thing that will happen is the food service director will mail a letter to the parent once that amount has reached $20 or more with a specific date for payment. And then fourthly, if the payment is not made, then a second letter goes to the parent indicating that if the account is not paid by a specific date, then it will be referred to the business manager for possible legal action. And I attached a letter that is a sample letter that uh, Mr. Morrow can use for that. And finally, if payment is still not made, this is the third time, then the business manager will send a letter indicating sort of a last chance to pay the account before it's referred to small claims court. So I want to go back and say the following. And that is that um, at this point, it's the end of the school year. School ends on June 25th. And we'd request the parents please pay their outstanding balances now so that you can start the next school year with a clean slate. And secondly, and most importantly, we really don't wish to take anyone to small claims court. We just want to have them pay for their students' lunches. If you can't pay, then please contact us to help us make arrangements, and we're happy to work with you on that. But it's really just not okay just to let these bills keep running. So whatever help people out there listening to us may be able to help, I hope they do, um, because we really would like to recover um, the monies owed us at the end of the school year and not have it continue. Ms. Dagerchuk? Um, just a couple of comments. Uh, first of all, I obviously understand that the school needs to collect the monies that are owed for lunches and parents need to pay their, the debts that are owed. However, the emphasis on, in my opinion, on legal action in this is, is too heavy, in my opinion. Um, if a parent, if, if they're over $20, they get a letter saying, you know, pay by this amount, um, and that letter talks about possible legal action if they don't pay it. I think more emphasis at that point should be placed on, um, and I don't see anything in that part of the memo, uh, uh, emphasis placed on please call us and tell us what's going on and let us help you make arrangements which is not mentioned um, I don't think that's the place for legal action uh, I understand that if an account gets to be you know really overdue that you know that maybe some legal action needs to happen but mentioning legal action twice in a memo when you're talking about a couple hundred dollars first of all is that really going to happen and secondly um, I think legal action for a school lunch is a little bit harsh. Mm -hmm. okay. Ms. Minnick and then Ms. Duvall. Just to, to piggyback on that, I think it would be appropriate to include a couple of sentences that simply states that we are required by law to provide lunches that meet a lot of requirements and that the food service budget is a revolving account that operates independently of the <coughs> school department budget so that they really don't have like cash reserves and a lot of flexibility, it, they depend on revenues to cover their costs. And maybe just making that statement will help people to 
be more timely with their payments. Okay. I think Mr. Ball had a comment and then Mr. Shuffle. Well, this has been an ongoing issue, and one of the things that I got out of this one is that um, at the elementary school level, all the kids still receive a hot lunch. In the past, I don't think that that's been true. I think that, um, and so when we're looking and talking about the legal system, I mean, we're kind of stuck somewhere. I would rather say, listen, pay up or we're going to have to take legal measures rather than say, you know, well, if you don't pay up, we're going to have to ostracize your child and they're not going to be eating the hot lunch. They're just going to be eating the crappy little peanut butter sandwich that they were giving out before. I mean, I don't think that that's fair at all, and I think that that's very hard on the kids to do it that way. So, I mean, yes, it is difficult to know how to do it, and I do think maybe we shouldn't come out the gate threatening, quote unquote. But, you know, it is a difficult situation of how to get the money without it affecting the children, because it's an adult issue and it's not a child issue. So, and I know that I've talked to a lot of kids that were really upset about, you know, mistakes being made or whatnot and them not being able to have their um, hot lunch. So I'm glad that we're now giving hot lunches again. Um, as someone who was on the list of, of people who owed money, I think it is a little bit of a kid issue when you give your kid a check and they don't turn it in. That could be an issue. Um, <laughs> but I think, but you know, I, I kid about that. But but part of it is when I found out I was on the list, I went online to get it to take care of it. And so my first question is, do we have any idea of how what percentage of families are using the online service that we have? Because as part of the online service, you do get reminders when your balance drops below a certain level. Um, so that that's helpful. Uh, and I think what we also want to take a look at is when I went online to take care of that, I, I put money on my account. And then there was a $2 service charge for me to do that. So if we could turn that around to make it an incentive rather than a disincentive, that might be something helpful as well. I don't know if that's possible with the current vendor that we have, but just observations that might be worth taking a look at. Other comments, Mr. Meyer? Um, just along the, the legal action, um, I don't think it's really realistic for, I mean, I would say if someone came to me and said, I want to sue someone, if it's not, if it's for under $500, it's not worth pursuing. Even if you're willing, I mean, first of all, there's a $40 filing claim, you know, filing fee in small claims court. And then when you win, you get a judgment. And the judgment is not the same as money, so then you have to execute on the judgment, which will cost you an additional 100, 200, right, to serve them. The sheriff has to serve them, garnish you their wages. So I think really from what other school committee members, I think this is an education process. Um, and, it, and we may invest some time um, up front in terms of trying to push people toward the online system um, and as well as you know, trying to make them um, spending staff time, I mean spending food service staff time and reaching out to parents and, and talking about you have this and how can we arrange for this to happen. But unfortunately, I think it's going to be a cost of doing business for the food service program to a large extent. Other comments? Oh, so I just want to say that I appreciate you taking you know, such quick action on this. And um, I'm glad that all the children will still receive a hot lunch. And um, you know, maybe a piece in the first letter could give some examples of what a payment arrangement might look like. Um, and so that way it's, it's um, sort of really reaching out to people who, who, you know, who don't qualify for free or reduced lunch but still might be struggling financially. Maybe there's some language in there that this is how you would go about applying and you know, reaching out to us so that we can kind of you know, figure out something. And here are a couple of, of examples of how you could do that. Other questions? Okay. So. Um, Again, this you were. This is a um, internal procedure. These out. are this procedures, isn't a, this and isn't if something you, that was sent out to parents or anything. Like that. No, it was sent out to Carol, and the letters go out tomorrow. So, um, assuming I can get hold of Carol tomorrow, we'll stop the letters, and we'll we'll not do anything with um, small claims court. Okay. So, would you like to proceed with your? Sure. Report? I mean, would you like a vote of the school committee on that? I or? heard the school committee. Okay. Um, I'm happy to do it any way you would like. 
I can tell you that it's been successful in the past, and I'll tell you why it was successful. Because once people got these letters, they paid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we didn't take people to small claims court, but we sort of blew that one, so, <laughs> so we'll take that away now. Um, <clears throat> next item. Um, I have a math update for you on the math of JFK. Um, at least one board member asked to have that done. I remember in the past. And um, Leslie uh, Wilson, the principal, is not here this morning, uh, this evening, um, because she's at a training session, probably still there right now, three days of learning the Aspen system of how to schedule the whole school um, using <coughs> something other than a large board, um, but to do it using the technology. Um, so the timing is great. She and um, a couple other people on her staff had to go this week for three days of training. And last week it was Brian and a couple of members on his staff did the same thing. So at the end of the school year, it's not great timing, but we do need to get a schedule ready for next year and that's why they're, they're there. So um, Leslie did help me in terms of preparation with regard to the math update with regard to JFK. Um, the 2013-14 school year this, you, this year is the first year of implementing the heterogeneous grouped math classes in grade 8. This group of students will have completed the new math pathway at the end of grade 8, so that's this year. The vertical math team continues to focus on the long-term goal of the new model, which is to make advanced placement classes accessible for more and more students. This data will be analyzed for the current eighth graders when they're juniors in the 2016-17 school year. This will be the most meaningful data that we'll get out of it, but we have to wait to get that far. At this time, we have the following data from the course selection for next year. Previously, only the 20 to 40 students in the accelerated math program that JFK were eligible to get to AP Calculus in 11th grade, and now we'll have over 100 students who will have that opportunity. Grade 8 math assessment um, was administered June 10th. It will be scored on June 13th. The vertical math team has been meeting monthly during this school year, focused on curriculum alignment, assessment, professional development. And under professional development, um, curriculum map aligned with the Common Core and the math frameworks was developed for grades 7, 8, and 9. The, and, and I might mention that the a vertical team in math is meetings um, using JFK and also the high school uh, working together. Um, there was an MCAS analysis and action plan. Um, district determined measures, which is part of the new evaluation system for teachers, was developed for grades six through nine. It was piloted in grade seven. Um, there was also collaborative planning and development of enrichment and re remediation opportunities. Teachers piloted the Khan Academy online math resource. Teachers reviewed math textbooks options and as you know, purchased the Big Idea um, math textbook series for JFK and the Core Plus textbook series for NHS. Um, more under professional development is that the um, Big Idea textbook series and Core Plus textbooks, there'll be an online component for students and families. There'll be embedded enrichment and differentiation and their extensions for every lesson. And this summer, the training and preparation uh, for the new textbook series, teachers will be part of that. Uh, and differentiation will continue into the next school year. There's also Atlas Rubicon curriculum mapping software, which we're giving some training on, and continued development of enrichment, connect, enrichment connected to the curriculum. All of those things are for the summer. I'd be happy to answer questions if I could. But I think that um, we're making some progress in terms of the direction that um, this, this board approved to go in, in terms of the um, accessibility to advance placement classes as we move down the road. And um, I think the vertical math team has done a great job this year. I've, I've also had a couple of meetings with them myself. I think they're very um, dedicated people working very hard um, to make sure that um, more and more of our students have the uh, accessibility to these classes at the higher levels. Mr. Shaw, do, do you feel that the that the parent concerns that were raised earlier in the year have been adequately addressed with the with what you just outlined? 
I think they have been because I, I number one, I haven't gotten a lot of emails recently, okay. um, <laughs> and that's sort of a clue. But I think that um, you know, in looking at the direction we're going in, I think that um, I don't know what else we can do because I think as we're looking at more and more research ac across the, the the country, we're moving into this sort of um, idea of having the algebra one, algebra two, and geometry across uh, rather than the separate courses. And um, it seems to bear out that kids do better with that. So I, I think we're on the right track. I, I think those parents are very much involved as they should be, but I think that things are going to be smoothed out there. I'm not sure what the outcome of the test results will be for those parents who really wanted their kids to be in some sort of advanced course next year. I don't know that. Any other questions? Okay. Next. Um, I want to say something about the new property tax work-off program um, that the mayor instituted this year for Northampton, which I think is quite an exciting program. Uh, other communities do have it. And I want to um, let you know, if you hadn't read it, that basically qualified um, property taxpayers can work off up to $1,000 in any given year by donating their services um, to different departments. So I want to let you know that schools are participating in that. And I'll be working with the principals at our meeting next week in terms of <coughs> individual needs at our schools. Um, I see things such as probably possible help in our school offices, libraries, cafeterias, whatever. But we'll, we'll look more in terms of where can we use these people. That's great. Um, but I think it's a wonderful opportunity for many people who do need that help in paying their taxes. Um, the school roof project. Remember we had uh, David Pomegranz here. Um, I think it was two or three meetings ago to talk about the fact that we had applied for MSBA funding um, to do uh, roofing projects at both uh, Leeds Elementary and Ryan Road. And on June 4th, uh, the MSBA Board of Directors invited the City of Northampton, meaning in our school district, into the Accelerated Repair Program to uh, collaborate with MSBA in conducting feasibility studies for potential roof and partial roof replacement projects at these two schools. Now there's a lot of steps to go through and there's specific dates to be met, et cetera, um, before it's a done deal, but at least we qualified at this level. And um, I, I want to give a lot of credit to uh, Greg Cohan, who's our supervisor of maintenance, and David Pomegranz, the director of central services. They're two great people to work with. I think you're in good hands. Um, and we've offered to do whatever we need to do on our end. Um, but um, that will be a tremendous savings to the city of Northampton if we can get um, uh, those funds applied to those two projects. So it's looking good. Um, I'm up to number five. Just hold on. I want to talk about a subject that's near and dear to my heart. And um, being here for the year, I, I sort of feel that I, I really would like to do this. I recognize the fact that I'm speaking for myself. And I recognize the fact that you are the school committee and you'll make your own decisions. And whatever they are, they are. But I sort of feel it's unfinished business. The topic is late start. And I just want to say some things on this. Um, I really feel, and I've said this so many times, that I think Late Start in Northampton is an economic issue. I don't think it's an issue of the research. I don't think it's an issue of how individuals feel. I think it's a matter of setting priorities and what is it as a community, as a school committee, can you afford to do? And what are the needs? And when you don't have money to do everything, you have to set priorities. And I think that, um, you know, we're very happy. The administrative team is quite thrilled, as I am, of the fact that we've been able to add back some positions this year and put in some other things. And we're very grateful for that. But there are still other educational needs that you have in your building. And I think I would be remiss if I didn't um, speak to a few of those. So I'm just going to take a couple minutes and say, for instance, at the elementary level, 
um, we've never gotten back our reading recovery teachers. That's a very intensive program, but if you do it at the lower levels, you don't need the services at the higher levels. They only work with very small groups of students. But reading recovery is an important program. You don't have it anymore. You used to have it. We have two technology specialists now, thanks to the one we put into the budget for next year. But you really should have one in each of your elementary schools. They shouldn't be shared. Um, they need to be there so that kids can have classes both in terms of technology, keyboarding, research, but also in terms of the literary part of media centers, of the library part. Um, art and music. You could use more of that, particularly at the elementary level. I'm also surprised you don't have an orchestra program. That's a, that's a, a really wonderful program. And I'm an orchestra if you don't teach them how to play in elementary school. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's what I'm talking problem. about. Um, that you <laughs> have nothing here for orchestra um, anywhere in the, in the system. And I think that would be a, a really um, important thing to have. Um, math coaches, you don't have any of those people either. We, we've tried to piece together some positions using title funds in terms of math and literacy. Um, there's not enough to go around. You desperately need another 0.5 psychologist at the elementary level. Um, I can tell you that, that right now in one of, my one of our elementary schools, we have three students. Now mind you, this is kindergarten through grade five. We have three of those kids hospitalized because of mental health difficulties. We need that kind of help in our schools. We also need an additional special education teacher because our caseloads are too high. Middle school, we need a new, uh, a part-time life skills teacher. Uh, this is your program for cognitively impaired students. We have too many students in one classroom. We need some help with that. We need math and literacy coaches. These, these are grades six, seven, and eight. And we also need another part five psychologist for our middle school. High school foreign language. We have very high numbers in foreign language classes, high 20s. Last year there were 37 kids in Latin 1. Um, physical education. We don't meet the state standards. Kids are supposed to have physical education every year. We don't do that. And we're going to be cited on that, by the way, but that's another story. That's under our civil rights audit, which we had to do a self-analysis of this year. They'll come and actually audit us next year. We know we'll be cited. We're not doing it. I've already talked to uh, Dr. Provost, and he'll be working with Brian. But you know what it takes is more teachers. Um, special education classes at the high school, the numbers are extremely high, more so than the elementary and middle school. And district-wide, technology devices. Whether you're doing park or you're not doing park, you still need more technology in your schools than you've got. And last but not least, and I think this is a, a big turnaround from the, um, by the administrative team over what you've seen before, you need a second person who's going to be concentrating on the secondary level of what Nancy Cheever is doing now for the elementary levels. Her position is K through 12. One person can't do all that. And when you look at what has to be done in a central office, you basically got now a superintendent and one person who's the director of curriculum assessment and the business manager. It can't be done. It's too much to do. And at this rate, you're going to burn her out. So what I would hope that you're going to be looking at <coughs> is a second person so that she would continue covering the pre-K up through and into the middle school person at the high school will work from the high school down to the middle school and then collaborate at the middle school level, um, which will help with all of your um, curriculum issues. Right now, it's, it, we're not coordinating the various departments and department chair meetings, et cetera, at the high school level because we just can't do it all. So those are some of the things that, that as an administrative team, we looked at and said, these are still needs. We're grateful to where we are now, but we need some other things. And you know, I think our feeling is that these all have higher priority than spending more money on transportation for Late Start. That's where we're coming from. Um, things to consider. Roughly 200 schools have Late Start across the country. I think you'd have more schools who would be doing that if they had the money to implement it, because we're not the only ones that have the transportation issue, believe me. 
I do not think that the evidence is conclusive that, they, that it really will make a difference to that many more <coughs> students. Um, the studies have been done um, and I think they tend to show that there's only a small increase in achievement of some of the students. And I question the um, cost um, involved in doing that. Other issues I wanted to um, touch upon or other things to consider is um, I think you have to weigh the later start time at the high school against the changes it would make in the starting time for elementary and middle school. I think that's going to be a real issue. Uh, I, for one, do not want to see elementary kids out waiting by the, for the buses in the dark in the winter. It's not a good thing. Um, the studies that refer to the lack of sleep for adolescents, um, some of them cite the fact that sleep time is interrupted by the technological devices that they carry into their bedrooms and have under their pillows or whatever. Late start's not going to take care of that problem. Parents need to take care of that problem. Um, I would also talk about the fact that this has been going on for five years in this community. And it's the same group of people. And people are very passionate about it and they very much care about it. But the group doesn't seem to be getting a lot larger and I don't mm -hmm. see that there's an overwhelming mandate from the community with regard to this issue. Uh, and perhaps there's even a large group out there called the silent majority. Um, the afternoon trade-off is also of concern because we have a lot of different kids in, in our community. Um, we have kids, for instance, that will be missing a lot of afternoon classes because they're athletes and they participate. Some of them are three-sport people. They'll be gone afternoons most of the school year. I'm not sure that's educationally sound. And I think there's also a large group of kids who really have to work after school. Uh, they have to work to help their families. Uh, that's cutting down on their time as well. It's also cutting on, down on the time that they can babysit their younger siblings because both parents are working. And um, I think also that you really need to um, pay some attention to your administrators. You know, they've been working with kids, they've been advocating for kids for an awful long time. Um, and I think that they have some expertise that perhaps people who are out in the community, who, not, who are not in the schools, they're not on the ground um, working with these kids, um, I think they have a lot of insight to be considered and I think they should be listened to or at least consulted. And I think my last point is this on this issue. You know, you've discussed it and rehashed it for five years. And as a school committee, you voted to look at it again next year, around budget time, around February. And I urge you to make a final decision on this, one way or another. Cut that umbilical cord. Do it or get off the whatever. <laughs> because you really need to make a decision. I think that's the most frustrating part for people who are out in the community and keep reading about this, hearing about it, et cetera. Make a decision and put that at the top of your list. And I've appreciated um, the fact that you've listened to that. And I just felt that I wanted to share that with you. But I want to end on a high note. And that is, I want to let you know that you're all invited to um, attend the administrative retreat this sure summer and it's going to be Thursday August 21st um, and you'll get more information on this it'll be starting about three o'clock in the afternoon going through dinner and the discussion that the administrative team and Dr. Provost uh, wanted to put forth was uh, uh, diversity class and race and I've invited uh, Dr. Sonia Nayato, who's the professor at UMass, to come and spend some time talking about this uh, and really looking at um, the diversity you have in this community. Because all of you have been elected by your constituents, but I'm not sure you hear from all your constituents. You hear from certain constituents. And I think it's important that, that there's a discussion out there and, and the administrators feel the same. It'll be very helpful, I think, to Dr. Provost to talk about who are the people who live in Northampton and who are the kids in your schools? So hopefully you'll be able to join um, Thursday, August 21st at 3 o'clock, probably last to about 7.30 or 8 that evening. And last but not least, I really want to thank the school committee for my year in Northampton. Um, I have to say other than snow days, it's been great. <laughs> um, it's been a true learning experience 
and never a dull moment. Lots of things to look at and consider and work through. And um, in my mind, at least, I really think that I've made a difference by not seeing myself as a caretaker superintendent, but rather a superintendent whose job was to stabilize the district and move it forward. Um, I'd like to think we've been able to do that. Uh, I'm extremely pleased that Dr. Provost will join you as your new superintendent. Um, I think he'll be an outstanding administrator. And I also must comment on the administrative team. What a fantastic group of people to work with. Um, and uh, therefore, I look forward to leaving the district in very capable, capable hands. And I think that things are on an up, upward swing for all of you. And I would be remiss if I did not mention two people. And those are the people in the central office, one sitting over there, uh, Laura and Tracy Haggerty. Uh, Harity, I'm sorry. And I have to tell you that uh, she functions much more as an assistant superintendent than any other administrative assistant I've ever worked with. She's absolutely fantastic, and is Laura. So I thank them both for that, and I wish you all tremendous luck um, because this is a great town, a great system. You got great people in place. You're on the uphill swing. Things are looking good. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much uh, for the superintendent report. So, uh, the next item on the agenda is to um, actually. You know what? I'm going to uh, I'm going to do something out of order. I was um, going to do something under new business, but I think given the timing. I'm going to do this now. So I'm, I'm going to take liberty as the chair. I hope you don't mind. And I'm going to um, actually put on my mayor hat uh, for a moment. Um, I'm, I'm always the mayor, but here I'm the chair of the school committee. But um, one of my powers as mayor is um, issuing proclamations. And so I've prepared a special proclamation for this evening that I wanted to um, issue. So I'm going to ask uh, Laura to give that to me. Um, and. Uh, <laughs> so I, ha I have a um, I have a special proclamation that I want to issue tonight, uh, which is one of my uh, awesome powers as mayor, um, and the proclamation is entitled Dr. Regina Nash Day, uh, June twelfth, two thousand fourteen. Nice. Uh, whereas Dr. Regina Nash has had a long and distinguished forty-seven year career in public education, that includes serving as an elementary teacher. English teacher, guidance counselor, assistant principal, director of student services, assistant superintendent, and superintendent. And whereas Dr. Regina Nash has been a superintendent of schools for 21 years, leading school districts in Vermont and Massachusetts, including most recently Frontier Regional and Union 38 school districts in South Deerfield. And whereas the Northampton Public Schools was extremely fortunate to have Dr. Nash serve as its interim superintendent of schools for the 2013-2014 school year. And whereas Dr. Nash has been an outstanding educational leader for our school district, bringing a deep reservoir of experience, sound judgment, and common sense during a critical time of transition. And whereas Dr. Nash formed effective working relationships with faculty, staff, the school committee, and the larger school community. And whereas Dr. Nash has earned the deep respect and affection of the NPS administrative leadership team for her unfailing support and confidence in their work, along with her wisdom and sense of humor during challenging times in education. And whereas Dr. Nash helped the Northampton Public Schools face important challenges, including improving school safety, helping secure MSBA roof repair funds, finalizing union contracts, developing an educationally sound budget, obtaining state relief from burdensome park testing requirements, and guiding two, not one, but two superintendent searches. And whereas Dr. Nash has been first and foremost an advocate for children and their families, both in Northampton and throughout her distinguished career as an educator, now therefore I, Mayor David J. Narkowitz, proclaim today, June 12, 2014, to be Dr. Regina Nash Day in the city of Northampton. 
I ask all residents to join me in expressing the thanks of a grateful community for her outstanding service to the Northampton Public School District and wish her and her family well in all future endeavors. In witness whereof, I have set my hand and imprinted the city seal this 12th day of June, 2014. And so. all very very much that's very touching and I, I really do appreciate being with all of you and I've enjoyed working with this board tremendously thank you you still got a few more days of work I do <laughs> all the way to June 30th that's right but we wanted to recognize you so um, now we can move into the executive session um, and I would ask someone to um, please uh, make a motion uh, using the um, Got using it. the language that's in the agenda, um, if I could ask for a motion. To I'll make it. it. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to move to executive session in the JFK Principals Conference Room under Massachusetts General Law Open Meeting to the approval of executive session minutes June 28, 2012 and May 8, 2014 and Chapter 30A, Section 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining of NASE. Is there a second on that motion? Second. Okay. I, I will ask the clerk to take a roll call vote, please, to move into executive session. Ms. Anthony? Yes. Ms. Anthony? Yes. Mr. Van Meyer? Aye. <laughs> oh my God, is it talk like a pirate day? <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 And so, we will be returning. So the um, the motion carries. I do need to announce that uh, we will be moving into executive session because to discuss these matters in open session uh, may be harmful to the uh, sc uh, school committee's bargaining position. Um, I also need to let folks know that we will be returning to open session from the executive session uh, to take additional votes in open session. We'll now move into executive session. So uh, welcome back to the Northampton School Committee meeting of Thursday, June 12, 2014. We, uh, the school committee is now reconvening in open session um, haf after having been in an executive session. And we will now take up uh, a new, new business items um, that uh, require a vote of, of the uh, school committee. Um, we have uh, two uh, memorandums of agreements, uh, which are part of our overall contract uh, with the Northampton Association of School Employees. Um, and these are MOAs with administrators and uh, the custodial unit. And I would ask uh, Mr. Meyer um, to uh, uh, both make a motion and also describe for folks, uh, just for the public, what these two memorandum of agreements are about. Okay. Um, so I would, I'm going to move these as two separate sure. agreements. I'm going to move the uh, ratification of the agreement between the Northampton School Committee and the Northampton Association of School Employees, the custodians unit. Uh, this is a slight modification of the agreement that we signed in September uh, that extended from July 1st, 2010 through, I'm sorry, through uh, 2013 to 2016. Um, after those negotiations were concluded, uh, we consulted with the association and determined that there was uh, a need to modify language, not to change anything, but simply to document um, the way that three employees within that unit, the bus drivers um, who work you know, for the school system during the year driving um, city, our, our school buses. Um, and the change was namely to recognize that part-time employees received benefits only if, according to the language of the contract, they worked 20 hours per week and 52 weeks per year. Um, these employees are full-time during the school year and then also work during the summer program in July. 
they exceed the number of hours that you would work if you worked 20 hours per week uh, times 52 weeks per year. And um, it was appropriate that they be recognized um, as, as part-time employees working a significant part of a full-time schedule. And as a result, um, they will receive um, some fringe benefits, uh, such as some holidays, accumulating sick leave, and also uh, accumulating um, long longevity uh, bonuses that would be paid um, at basically five-year steps in their in their career. Um, so these were easy negotiations, uh, and they were it took a, it took a while to get everything moving forward, but um, we have we have concluded them. Okay. So there's been a motion made um, for the school committee to second it. Okay. Uh, Excellent. Are there any questions uh, regarding this uh, MOA that the school committee will be entering into? Hearing none, um, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on, uh, on the acceptance of this, approval of this memorandum of agreement, ratification. Um, Mr. Howard? Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Uh, yes. 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 And I'll have okay. you. Okay. Um, I would move that we ratify the agreement between the Northampton School Committee and the Northampton Association of School Employees, uh, the Unit B, which consists of administrators. Um, this is a contract which is the successor agreement to the contract that expired June 30th, 2013. Um, there are six units in um, Northampton Association of, of School Employees. We successfully concluded negotiations in the fall with five of those units. Um, this unit B, we began negotiations um, after those agreements had been signed. This um, agreement that we are entering into will last for three years from July 1st of 2013 until June 30th of 2016. Um, there were some very minor modifications um, in language, one to recognize that all of our assistant administrators are at this point um, full calendar year employees, so the number of work days called out in the agreement was modified to reflect that. Um, there was a, a modification of the language around the employees using their professional judgment to decide whether to maintain office hours when schools are closed due to weather conditions. And there was calling out the current percentage that is paid by the city for preferred provider organizations. So this was not an actually a change, this was just documentation in the contract language. And um, finally, in the salary, the salary schedule was amended or, um, or modified to track the salary increments, base increments, of all the other units that we had negotiated with. And so this was the same deal that all the five units got. Um, and finally, um, in recognition that we have significantly changed the responsibilities of uh, three assistant administrators within the district, um, namely uh, Barbara Black, the Associate Director of Student Services, who is the Early Childhood Coordinator, um, Pam Palmer, who is the Associate Director of Student Services and cover special education, and finally Karen Jarvis Vance, who is the Director of Health Services, Health Education and Safety. Um, these employees were at a lower salary on, on a lower salary schedule than um, the rest of the members of this unit, recognizing that in reconfiguring some of these departments, that they had picked up um, significantly greater number of duties and responsibilities, um, it was decided that we would move them into the higher um, level and that they would be on the salary schedule with our high school vice principals, our middle school vice principals, and our associate director of student services. So that was the last modification to the agreement. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. So um, <coughs> there's been a motion uh, made and seconded to ratify this uh, second um, memorandum of agreement. Uh, any further questions or discussion? Hearing none, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Yes. 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 
Yes. Yes. Yes. Okay, so um, both of those uh, votes carry, and the uh, MOAs are city school committee ratifies those two MOAs. The next uh, item on the agenda, just a note about our future business and meeting dates. Uh, special school committee meeting scheduled for June 23rd, 2014 at 6 o'clock. Um, and then a regular, next regular <coughs> school committee meeting July 10th, 2014 at 7.15 p.m. Um, and then finally, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. There's a second. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? The meeting is adjourned. Thank you.